from the Energy Boutique with your energy forecast for Wednesday, August 7th. Okay, so we had the moon in Virgo energy again all day here today. Of course, we are focusing in on the problems. We are trying to focus on the challenges, the obstacles. We're focused on it because we have to become aware of them in order to fix, to heal, to repair them. That's what the Virgo energy is all about. Fun fact, Wednesdays are ruled over by Mercury. Mercury rules over the Virgo energy that the moon is in. The Mercury himself is now retrograde in his rulership in Virgo energy. And of course, Venus is in Virgo energy as well. We actually have Mercury and Venus coming together for their conjunction here today. I did talk about all of the conjunctions this week in the Ascension forecast, how the moon and Mercury and Venus, they're all coming together. They're all triggering and activating each other, which of course is going to put us in a totally different perspective, a different mood, a different attitude to really analyze, dissect, reevaluate, rearrange our physical realms according to new perspective, new ideas, new wants, new needs, new desires. So there are nine different aspects taking place here today. Six of them are going to involve the moon. The moon in this Virgo energy getting into the boxing ring, fighting it out, squaring off with Jupiter. Jupiter is the planet of growth, expansion, beliefs, abundance, blessings, and the accumulated wisdom that we've already learned throughout our tough love life lessons. So the Virgo energy, the Gemini energy, what do they have in common? Mercury rules over both of them because this is a square. This is highlighting where it is that we're having a hard time getting on the same page with ourselves, where it is that we're going through a little bit of a kerfuffle as we go through some growing pains. Emotionally speaking, because the moon is in Virgo energy, we're picking things apart. We're trying to weigh our options. We're trying to kind of, you know, weigh the pros and cons, the highs, the lows, the everything in between, while we're reevaluating how it is that we feel about certain options, certain opportunities, especially for us to grow up, to go forward, to move on, to evolve. Where again, integrating what it is that we've learned, what it is that we've already done and kind of solidifying that as a new foundation for us to operate from. Jupiter, of course, is looking to push the boundaries of our comfort zone, especially where our thoughts, our ideas, our options and opportunities are concerned. Very divisive here in the Gemini energy. And if this was a positive interaction, we would be getting some insight. We would be infused with confidence, with optimism, but it is not. Therefore, we're very low on those particular aspects. And if anything, we are in a highly critical, super judgmental, negative Nancy perspective. Now, the moon is going to go ahead, make an awkward interaction with Pluto, the great transformer himself, who is retrograde in Aquarius energy, highlighting the power struggles in our lives. Now, a lot of this is because that Aquarius energy we want to think about the future. We want to improve. We want to be better. We want to whittle away and remove the aspects out of our current circumstances that we don't want to see manifest in our new vision, our new goal, our new dream. Normally, the Plutonian energy and the Virgo energy work very well together because the Plutonian energy takes us on a little bit of an inward journey to kind of pick apart, if you will, our deep seated psyche, the conditioning, the programming, where it is that again, our old self, old ego self is fighting against the new version of self, the new wants, the new needs, the new desires. The Virgo energy is of course, focusing in on the lower level intellect how our minds work, how we're bringing information in, challenging old ideas, old perspectives. And so, yes, there is an intensity here because, of course, Pluto is involved. But we're starting to realize that we have to give ourselves permission to think about the greater, grander picture, the vision, the dream, the goal that we actually want to end up in. And then chop it up into smaller, finer details. That's where the Virgo energy is concerned. We have to focus on what we have power and control over as far as the smaller details of our lives go, because the smaller details are either going to make or break our overall success for that goal, that vision, that dream. 
The moon is then going to interact in a positive way with Chiron, the wounded healer, who is now retrograde in this Aries energy. And so this is going to help kind of pull us out of that funk, pull us out of that negative narrative, because we're really starting to see how much we've grown how much we've evolved, especially since the cancer season popped off with that solstice. A lot has taken place. We haven't really stopped to giving ourselves a little bit of credit where credit is due and deserved. And of course, this Virgo energy, we are perfectionists, but we understand now that the perfection is in the imperfections. And so emotionally speaking, we're giving ourselves a little bit of a pat on the back. We are more open to suggestions, more open to trying new things, more open to kind of seeing where it is that we do have an opportunity to grow up and to kind of grow through what it is that we've been going through. We are going to hit a little bit of a snag, though, because the moon in this Virgo energy going to sit directly across from oppose Saturn. Saturn is the Lord of Karma. He rules over roles, responsibilities, systems, structures, foundations, willpower, and discipline. And he is retrograde in this Pisces energy. Again, really crushing the boundaries, the structures that are holding us back instead of actually keeping us safe and making us feel safe and secure. Really kind of deconstructing our belief system the old version of beliefs, the old ideas that we got caught up on, we're really starting to see with Saturn what we have to clear away, what we have to remove. Just think of the, the Pisces energy as the waves of the ocean crashing upon the earth, eroding the weakest parts of that earth and revealing a new surface, a new foundation, a new structure. This opposition takes place because, of course, the Virgo energy and the Pisces energy, they sit across from each other in the Zodiac wheel and both represent healing. It is the healing axis. The Virgo energy wants to focus on this physical realm, healing our mental plane, our heart space, healing some, you know, physical ailments in our physical bodies and the situations, the circumstances in our materialistic realm that aren't so happy, aren't really supporting us. Well, the Pisces energy, that is kind of healing our emotions. It's healing our soul and our spirit. It, there are karmic wounds that are being healed. There's a lot going on behind the scenes. So this opposition is almost a little bit of a reality check for us to realize where we have to kind of balance the scales, so to speak. Yes, we have to focus on our physical realm. We have to focus on the aspects that are really troubling to us that we need to kind of either remove and re eliminate or double down and actually commit to. Well, the Pisces energy, that's our vision. That's our dreams. Yes, it's intangible, but it starts with what we're focused on, what we believe is possible, what we actually believe that we deserve. And without that aspect, we can't manifest anything new in the physical realm. And so balance is needed. There's going to be a little bit of a reality check that shows us where we're leaning too far into one realm over the other. And of course, balance is always the key. We have a very interesting interaction taking place here between Jupiter and Pluto. So Jupiter is the planet of growth, expansion, beliefs, abundance, and blessings. Again, the accumulative wisdom that we've learned through our life lessons. Pluto, of course, the great transformer through the death resurrection process. Retrograde and Aquarius energy, Jupiter's in Gemini energy. Gemini energy is the lower level intellect. Aquarius energy is the higher level of intellect. So let's talk about this for a second. Pluto being the great transformer, anytime he is involved, there's going to be a major change, a major transformation of something. And it usually comes out of the darkness, the heaviness, the weighted thoughts, the weighted emotions, the conditioning, the programming that we realize is no longer needed, where we do have room for improvement. We have Jupiter who is representing our beliefs at this particular point in time, and something has changed. Yes, we just had this new moon in Leo that did trigger a pivot point for our heart space. Now, of course, with Mercury retrograde, we are kind of, you know, testing the boundaries of how easy we are able to change our mind, change our perspective, change our narrative. But this is definitely going to be intensified because, you know, Pluto does that and Jupiter tends to turn the volume all the way up on whatever is going on. So we have two of these odor planets that are really intensifying things. We're 
seeing where it is that we have had a change in our belief system, a change in the way that we look at ourselves, a change in circumstances that require a change in the path in the direction that now we have to be walking. This is an illumination on where it is that maybe we need an attitude adjustment. Okay, many of us do. Many of us still holding on to an old belief system, an old perspective, an old idea, an old opinion that essentially at this point is just blocking the process from us moving on. This is going to kind of highlight the struggle between, okay, we don't know where we're going, but do we stand still and learn all we can about what we could possibly run into if we were to start moving forward? Like, are we concentrated on educating ourselves with the wisdom, with the knowledge that we think we're going to need in this new path or direction? Or are we going to wing it? Are we going to fly by the seat of our pants? And are we willing to kind of learn as we go? That's the two parts of self. Again, Pluto highlighting the power struggle and most of these power struggles are taking place within ourselves. Here's the thing. There is this overall impulsive energy that is kind of triggering the sense of urgency where we need to hurry up and kind of make a decision or choose or decide or whatever the case may be. Um, just remove that out of your awareness there is nowhere other than this present moment that you need to be, okay? Now, here's the thing. If you take action, if you make moves, if you act out of reaction or impulsivity, you are going to set yourself back, okay? Mercury is retrograde. We're not doing anything new. We're doing the old stuff over again in a better way. So please, please, please understand this is not a time of forward movement. This is a time of rearranging and readjusting our physical realms, our mental plane, our heart space, our perspective, our understanding, our, let's call it perspective on where we want to go from here. We are altering the vision, the goal, the dream. And so this is not a time to take action. It's not a time to make moves. Now, we follow that particular interaction up with the sun shining a very bright light in this Leo energy, giving us the heart, the soul, the spirit to actually be brave and bold and courageous enough to do the thing, whatever that thing is, hopefully just standing up for yourself, hopefully just declaring what it is that you need to be doing in order to make you happy in some kind of sense. The sun is sextiling beautiful interaction with Jupiter. So this is going to kind of restore our hopes, our wishes, our dreams, give us a little bit of patience. We understand that, yes, it does require some short term sacrifice for long term gains. We do just kind of, you know, press pause, if you will, and we start orienting to all of the good. We're plucking out the silver linings. We're saying, hey, we have had a lot to go through a lot to kind of process. Yes, we do have wants, needs, and desires that we want to pursue, but nobody's pushing us to do it right now. This is, again, shining a bright light on the most positive version of self, the most confidence, the most boldness, the bravery that we need to tap into to prepare ourselves to make a major move. And so, you know, we're putting ourselves out there in a way that gives us less pressure to take action, to make moves, but to also give ourselves permission to dream. This is us kind of doubling down on this new version of self, giving ourselves the time, the energy, the space to kind of feel our way through what it is that we're currently going through. And we're able to see the bigger, broader picture right now. The details might not be as clear as we would like. Again, Mercury is retrograde and Virgo energy, but the big vision that feels good. That makes us smile. That feels good. We're gaining more and more momentum, more and more clarity on what that actually means for us and what we have to do to actually get from where it is that we're at to where it is that we desire to be. Of course, with that beautiful energy, we have to have one setback, right? That's how the energy works. So the moon in Virgo is then going to make a very harsh interaction with Chiron, the wounded healer retrograde in this Aries energy. Basically, just when we're flying high, just when we're feeling ourselves, okay, just when we're feeling brave and confident, we're giving ourselves all of these permissions to be happy without actually having to do anything to be happy and to think about the dream, the goal, the vision without actually applying the pressure to take action to make moves. 
This is the part in time where we fall apart, okay? Now we're focused on the problems. That's what Virgo energy does. It's like, oh, great idea. That's a great idea, but it's so general. Let's focus in on all of the damn things that could go wrong, okay? This is where the Virgo energy takes us. But we have to do that in order to come up with a solution. We have to be prepared. This is, you know, the Virgo energy strives for perfection. Is anything perfect? Absolutely not. But we have to give ourselves the time, energy, and space to actually sort through the different variables, the different options. We have to think about all that could go wrong so that we have a plan B in case of emergency. And so, yeah, we're not really feeling great. Um, we are kind of picking at the scabs of the wounds that we just started healing. We're sitting in the fears, the doubts, the insecurities, and we're questioning whether we have the ability to do all the things that need to be done in order to actually clean up the mess of the old and set ourselves free to start building towards something new. 11, 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, Mercury, ruler of the mental plane, ruler of information, communication, how it is that he, we express ourselves, who is retrograde in his rulership in Virgo energy and also rules over the day being Wednesday, is coming up to bumping into teaming up with Venus. Venus is the goddess of love, beauty, worth, pleasure, and money. She is also in this Virgo energy. She just freshened this Virgo energy. And again, with all of the different conjunctions that we've been having throughout the course of the week, the moon and Venus already did their thing. The moon and Mercury already did their thing. Now Mercury and Venus are doing their thing. And this is almost like a reset on analyzing the feelings that we're in and the feelings that we just had reprocessing events and circumstances that popped off and what we actually said and whether or not we actually mean it. And if we do, where it is that we're doubling down, we're really like, you know, building a strong boundary, a strong structure with the words in which we've, you know, already put out there. This is an opportune time really for us to get just focused on understanding our feelings better especially in relationship dynamics, because many relationship dynamics have been popping off since that solstice gateway. And although we're in a light and, and you know, kind of bright kind of mood here, um, there are some realizations that need to happen. And this is what this conjunction is all about. A conjunction is a reset. So something is ending and something is also a beginning. And we're lighthearted and we're a little bit of chatty, chatty Cathy's, if you will. But realistically, what we need to be doing right now is just getting clear on our thoughts, on our feelings, especially in relation to the people, to the world around us. Yes, Venus wants that happiness, that harmony, that balance and everything. But at the same time, we're just starting to pick apart and process what needs to stay and what needs to go. So we are wanting peace, harmony, and balance. But in order to do that, we have to remove some things. We also had to add some things in, rearrange, restructure a couple of things here. And this is the analyzation part that is very much needed in order for us to figure out what we need to do in order to achieve that vision, that goal, that dream of peace, harmony, and balance, not only between our heart and our head, but within our relationship dynamics, overall, just how we feel in the world. So the last thing that we have going on here today is the moon in this Virgo energy trining beautiful interaction with Uranus, the great awakener who is in Taurus energy. So a trine means that we're working with the same kind of element. Virgo energy is an earth sign, although he is, you know, ruled over by Mercury and Taurus is an earth sign ruled over by Venus. Interesting. So this is a trine. This is a beautiful interaction. It's a gentle nudge in the right direction. It is a, a, a positive growing pain, if there's such a, a word. Let's say, let's not call it pain. Let's call it growth spurt. Um, but it's coming on strong. So let's just say it might not be a pain as in hurt, but it's going to be felt. It's going to be noticed. Uranus brings in shock unexpected perspectives, unexpected events that trigger certain thoughts, certain feelings that you wouldn't have had otherwise. And because this is a positive interaction, this is gaining clarity on what needs to change in our physical realm. We're talking about earth energies, physical realm. 
Uranus being in the Taurus energy has been pushing for us to pivot, pushing for us to open up our minds to doing things in a new way, pushing for rearranging and restructuring and readjusting all of the things. It's that fixed earth sign, that Taurus energy that Uranus is in that has us kind of stuck in a rut. So this is going to kind of zap our system in the most positive of ways, give us some insight, give us some clarity on what we could definitely rearrange in our physical realms that would give us a lot more stability, a lot more happiness, a lot more joy, and basically eliminate some of the dysfunction, some of the problems. <music>